Okay. Um, he hello, everyone. This is uh, Frank Chen. Um, I'm Wuwin product planner for the uh, product, uh, for the 5G and age products. And uh, welcome to join my presentation. Along with me, uh, uh, there is Raja from Radisys, and he will co-present with me uh, to talk about their RAN software features used um, in this 5G field. And I will talk about the architecture of the 5G SA demo that uh, we're currently working on, um, the uh, open age based uh, EP100, that's uh, we went uh, EP100 age platform. And uh, so probably everybody has known there's a uh, interactive uh, etherpad um, underneath. Um, so you can leave your messages or questions there, okay? All right, so let's begin. Uh, why is 5G uh, SA the standalone mode? Um, as the industry uh, have already seen lots of lots of 5G use cases such as smart factory, autonomous vehicle, VR, AR, mobile games, or 8K high resolution video stream on demand, et cetera. All of this fantastic vertical application uh, require true 5G performance. Um, so, oh, AKA uh, EMBB, URLLC, and MMTC. And it can be only realized under 5G standalone mode, uh, which has no performance drop uh, based uh, during the 5G and SA because there are uh, 5G, 4G handover process. So this is um, the reason that um, we are uh, preparing this uh, 5G uh, SA demo. Okay, and we will uh, use uh, EP100 platform to integrate uh, with Radis's software, uh, aka Mobility in Engine 5G RAN, uh, with the uh, WMC, our sister company, uh, provide option 7.2 ORAN compliant ORU and uh, some uh, in Intel solution with this demo. Okay. So in this presentation, I'm going to, uh, we were going to share some uh, topology and configuration for this demo. So feel free to ask question. All right, so he, here's how it looked like for our 5G SA demo setup. Um, this diagram shows how we connect each device for this demo. Uh, we will use three nodes of WeWin EP100 right in the middle. As you can see, each slate, each node of the server uh, that's uh, in one enclosure, um, mid, uh, middle in the bottom, that's a one enclosure. And uh, uh, running on top of them, there will be software provided by Radices so that each slate will become uh, either old, old DU, open DU, open CU, or core network. Um, and uh, we use 10 gig SFP plus to connect uh, between the ODU and the ORU. And this demo will showcase the broadband performance of 5G SA by using the 5G mobile phone um, to request an AK video stream from the video server resides in the uh, core network. And uh, uh, the video stream will go through all the way from the core network to the CU, to the DU, to the RU, and then to the mobile phone. Um, because of some hiccup which, uh, caused by the COVID-19, um, so we currently plan to uh, have this demo up and running in uh, next quarter, uh, the first quarter of uh, 2021. All right. Uh, since uh, uh, since we are talking, we, we mentioned EP100 quite a, quite often. So before we talk about further details of the topology, let's take a look um, some of the further details back of we win EP100. Um, so this this is the uh, 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 this is the slat uh, at the top, and at the bottom that's the enclosure. We call it EP100, and uh, the slat is one RU height. Uh, half width of uh, 19 inch width, and it, uh, the power supply is DC 12 volt from the back plane in the in the enclosure. And each slat um, has four pieces of uh, PWM fan and controlled by the BMC uh, resides in the slat. 
and uh, the CPU is with Intel second generation Xeon SP, and the system chip is PCH. It comes with the eight pieces of DIMM, and the BMC chip was from SBIT. Storage wise, uh, we used uh, the M.2 for the boot drive, and uh, there are two pieces of U.2 for the storage. And it has um, one expansion slot uh, in OCP 3.0 form factor, uh, providing the network connectivity, and also uh, in uh, standard PCI Gen 3 by 16 for high half length slot to provide a more uh, expandability. All right. Okay, um, this page is going to show more details on the topology. On the right hand side, that's the 5G RU unit provided by uh, WMC, uh, we win sister company. And we use the 10 gig SFP plus cable to connect the DU on the left of the RU. Um, by doing so, the 5G control plan, user plan and sync plan would go through this interface to communicate with uh, associated devices, uh, DU, CU in the topology. And uh, to make the time sync correctly between the DU and RU, we will connect the PDP Grandmaster or uh, so called uh, 1588 master clock uh, with the DU via 1G cable uh, in the middle. Um, the DU and CU are connected uh, with another 10G cable. The associated control plan and user plan data will uh, be exchanged via this cable, via this interface as well. Um, between the 5G core network and the 5G uh, CU, uh, there's another 10, G, 10 gig uh, SFP plus cable for the uh, required file data exchange. Okay, in this page, we will show you a bit further details on the function blocks of each 5G device. Uh, at the center, that's the 5G core network, is set the Intel uh, X710 NIC card. Um, it actually uh, uh, runs with the uh, core network software uh, provided by Redisys. And at the top left, that's the 5G CU or so called central unit configured with uh, one piece of Intel OCP 3.0 NIC and uh, a Q80 card as well. Um, running on top of that, uh, that's the Redis's L3 CU software. Um, to the right, that's uh, a 5G DU uh, is configured with uh, Intel uh, OCP NIC card as well as well as a FEC card provided by Intel. And on top of it, uh, there is a uh, Hi-Fi so uh, Intel FlexRun software, as well as the L2 DU software provided by Radisys. Um, for the RU on the right-hand side, uh, it has discrete components for RF antenna and also the Lo-Fi, um, also Intel-based um, solution. Okay. Uh, that covers my portion for the topology. And uh, Viraja, hand it over to you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. And uh, so I hope uh, you're able to uh, listen to me, right, Frank? Yes, loud okay. and clear. Okay, very good. So uh, at the outset, I would like to thank you uh, for this opportunity. So, Together with Vivin uh, Radices, so we are pleased to uh, you know, provide this solution details. As Frank mentioned about the 5G uh, solution overview, let me uh, do a bit of deep dive on the RAN solution, whether it is the CU as well as the DU, in terms of the highlights from a software perspective. So the software is basically positioned as an integrated as well as a split architecture. So uh, it can be for, like, for example, Frank showed that CU and DU uh, as a collapsed uh, option also is possible where both of them can be shown as a distributed as well as a integrated. So the software is flexible on that. And uh, maybe Frank, you can just highlight it, uh, the, all the points or, and do I have access to how, I, yeah. 
type. So, so the software is again platform agnostic. So what it means is that um, we talked about the Intel Quad uh, to do the acceleration or for example, integration with the WNC radio. So from a software perspective, that is abstraction and it is, uh, it is uh, well guarded with the open interfaces such as let's say uh, the CU and DU are uh, split two based uh, and we are compatible to the ORAN 7.2a with WNC radio. So these are all standard compliant 3GPP release 15 compatible and uh, fully uh, available in uh, bare metal as well as in containerized or virtualized option, right? So the software uh, is available uh, and supports the FR1, FR2, SA as well as NSA. And uh, in terms of uh, the flexibility, it kind of uh, caters to uh, basically as much as close to the open interfaces as much as possible, right? So that's the thing that in this slide, I wanted to present that the CUDU is compatible to 3GPP as well as ORAN standards. And uh, it has been abstracted so that it can basically move from a single platform to a multiple platform and can scale from a single cell to a multi-cell environment. So that way we can basically start with, let's say, a greenfield deployment and scale it for multiple, uh, uh, no, as, as we grow the user subscriber base, we can grow it. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, in this slide, uh, let's bit of more deep dive on uh, architecture. So the CU uh, uh, and say DU, uh, we are showing it in a more of a, interface wise so as you can see that cu is also can be deployed as a cu cp and cu up as recommended by oran as well right so there is an e1 interface coming in between and uh, so these can scale so as you can see that the control plane user plane separation as per the cops architecture is fully achieved in this and it can be together clubbed with the weaving hardware to so how the software can scale and it can be instantiated using containerized dockerized version as well as the DU, as you can see that DU has got the F1 split the, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the baseband, the Intel FlexRAN baseband to the Mac. It is, um, uh, it is the FAPI interface, 5G FAPI interface compatible. And um, uh, from DU to CU, it's a split two. So in terms of very high level overview, the CU actually takes care of all the layer three aspects of it, control pane aspects of it, the radio resource management, uh, the PDCP ciphering and integrative protection, uh, all those call admission control, all those algorithms will be taken care of by the CU. And the DU will take care of all the MAC, RLC, MAC scheduler, uh, as well as the integration with the baseband of the Intel Flex RAM. So that's how the uh, software decomposition uh, it is at a high level that this slide is kind of capturing that the software is modular, it is API driven, it is uh, loosely coupled and it is highly portable. So as we scale from a hardware to hardware, so all these aspects should help uh, make sure that the software is kind of a uh, path to you know, migrate to the next standard, such as let's say release 16, when we see the URLLC and other MMTC kind of uh, features coming in, it should basically make sure that we do not have a fragmentation in our software or even the solution, right? So uh, again, just to cover uh, perspective from the DU perspective, there is an integration with the WNC radio involved where you can see that through the open uh, ORAN 7.2a uh, from front all. So there is a plan to basically, we will integrate the radio and make sure that the over the air, this whole solution works with the 5G core network. And we can demonstrate the use cases as, uh, as per TGPP and ORAN spec. On the right hand side table, there is a compliance table, uh, not sure of how much it's visible, but this, uh, uh, this solution has got complete uh, details compliance sheet from each of the protocol stack involved, whether it is CUCP or CUUP or a DU, the respective protocol stack, uh, the compliance is important from a uh, interop with the commercial 5G smartphone from a NAS, as well as from the RLC Mac, RRC, PDCP spec perspective, it is released to 15.5.1 compatible. And also towards the core network side, 
on the NG interface that is fully compatible to the standard NG interface to the uh, core network. So uh, it is basically saying that uh, the core network can uh, basically be either from Radisys or from anyone. So as much as possible, we have kept it open interface, 3GPP and ORAN compatible. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, in this slide, basically, again, touching base on the core network perspective, as we know that from LTE EPC, the 5G core network is quite different because it is based on service-based architecture. So the, the protocol software is implemented as well in a, in a format which is recommended by 3GPP. When they started thinking about the COPS architecture of C-plane, U-plane separation, uh, this has started even from um, like LTE days, but in 5G, the starting point itself has been uh, based on that philosophy. So as you can see that there is a well-defined roadmap, but today the AMF, SMF, UPF functions are fully available and it has been uh, interrupted with commercial smartphones of 5G and uh, the CUDU. So, and also that is a roadmap from, our, from software perspective, how we can achieve the remaining functionalities like the AUSF, UDM, PCF, and so on, right? So, uh, uh, idea is that basically we start with the OC, ODU, ORU integration on a 5G uh, in our environment, and then we basically meet this EMBB release 15 uh, requirements, and then we kind of grow in terms of, let's say, other features that are important, uh, which can be useful for other verticals, such as integration with Wi-Fi and um, integration for with the quality of service where we need policy to be enforced, right? So like PCF. And uh, so all these components, there is a well-defined roadmap. And in this slide, we are kind of capturing what's available today and what is going to come in subsequent quarters. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so in this slide, uh, basically in terms of overall feature, like for 5G and R, RAN, as well as core network perspective, these are some of the features which are available and tested over the air. So we feel very confident that today when we speak about what are the features, so from a release 15 EMBB perspective, all those important features are today already available. And as you can see, that uh, not only from a uh, spec compliance, but also from a feature richness, right? So uh, let's talk about the features. Like for example, I started with the release 15.5.1 compliance, but again, FR1, FR2, SA, NSA, FDD, TDD, fully compliant are there. Carrier aggregation, again, is going to be very important for even FR2. So even on FR1 also, uh, like multiples of 20 megahertz or uh, a combination of 20. So those uh, features are also going to be important. Uh, Multi-cell support, because we may, may need uh, to grow uh, in terms of a uh, cell capacity and coverage perspective. So hence the multi-cell support is very important. It is well, well supported. Uh, beam forming is again, very important from FR2, but in FR1 also it can be useful. So hence we support. VONR uh, is also supported. Massive MIMO is there is a roadmap towards it. Today it's already tested on a 4T4R, uh, but there is a well defined plan to make it to even 32T, 32R in 2021. Uh, when we talk about uh, the features, it is very important to think about the deployment aspects. Hence, there is a strong focus of uh, KPI counters, the configurability of the software, how we can use. Uh, NetConf and Yang kind of uh, architecture, which is recommended by 3GPP. So we uh, support fully the 3GPP and NetConf Yang model and the KPI stats, uh, OM performance, as well as alarm. All those can, parameters can be fully tracked and a user can be tracked. So that way, uh, you know, this uh, debugging as well as uh, configurability aspects is taken care. Over an interface compliance, as I talked about that from a E1, F1 uh, to ORAN 7.2a, it's already in place. And then E2 and O1 are kind of some of these features that are kind of work in progress. On the middle path, uh, some of the differentiating features like network slicing, uh, which is going to be very useful for private 5G uh, deployment scenario where we can club different quality of service. So this is a very important feature. 
and uh, supplementary uplink, uh, DRX. Again, coming to scheduler, it is also, we already support a quality of service and a PFS and round robin scheduling, right? And uh, from a bandwidth part perspective, it's also support LTNR coexistence is going to be one of the important features where uh, the same software can coexist with the LTE. And um, from a roadmap perspective, again, release 16 is going to be important where we talk about uh, multiple layers support in downing and uplink, uh, higher number of UE per TTI, and then release 16 uh, mini slot for URL LC. Now, those are some of the massive MIMO, multi-user MIMO. Those are some of the release 16 features that we are tracking today. Again, on the uh, rightmost uh, column, as we see that these are some of the advanced uh, uh, features that we uh, already support, like for example, uh, SI broadcast, RRC, re-establishment, because when we talk about the deployment, it has to not only work in a lab environment, but also uh, when we talk about link adaptation and the different uh, environment behavior that may, uh, that may have effect on the performance of the system. So uh, like such as paging, RRC re-establishment, handover, is going to be really important, especially from a handover perspective, we already support the XM uh, based handover. And uh, so then intra CU, intra DU, those kind of handovers are already supported. And uh, uh, support, we talked about the integrated ciphering also during the Intel Quiet integration. So it is possible to, you know, uh, to create that uh, solution over a software as well as it to improve the performance, we can use the Intel Quad processor to offload this part. So it really depends on the uh, deployment um, and use case that we're talking about, but both from a software as well as integrated with hardware accelerator, uh, this feature can be achieved, right? And also to the last I said already that the software is available in either in bare metal or as well as in containerized dockerized version. Right. So that way, as we see uh, the scalability aspects of it, you know, how it can be easily uh, man managed and deployed in the network. So that's where we see a lot of traction on Kubernetes skate based uh, Docker container uh, uses and use the uh, operators uh, release 15 onwards the approach that how it can be easily uh, supported and tested in their live deployment. So the Feature highlights that I wanted to capture, and that is, I think, my last slide. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, and this is Marco. Just one question: that now, when you have this 5G standalone uh, uh, demonstration over here, that which are the real 5G components and which are like uh, simu simulations? So the complete CU, DU, and 5G core are the real components. There is no simulation here. Right. So okay. we we plan to use commercial smartphones like the Huawei Mate 30X or Samsung Galaxy S20 or even the new phones that are going to come up on 5G. All we are going to use is commercial smartphone and hence it has to be compatible to the 3GPP as well as Orion interfaces to make sure that it is a fully product quality. Okay. Just one, one more question. So, um, hey, so Marco. Marco, maybe we could follow up with those questions uh, afterwards. We're about three minutes over uh, okay. for the start of the next presentation. Yeah. yeah, but Mike, we can take one more from Marco, if you can. Well, but we're, we're three minutes over. That's yeah. why I'm saying that maybe That's we can get up on the side okay, and we no continue problem. to...